I quickly want to give a short lightning talk on thread pool elements because that's what I, you know, been tinkering about as as a prototype right now. So if I go on the next slide, um, I was wondering like how would you write a thread pool in C plus plus twenty and just like an easy thread pool, not like something high end. Um, and so I've been prototyping in Compiler Explorer and it needs some more debugging and also needs a default needs. Um, but I see here, for example, like I had like the six, seven actually during the creation of this lightning talk, this went away. So we'll get back to this. Um, and the Compiler Explorer is like good for prototyping, but it's not so good for, for debugging. So at the end, I'll talk about what, what's like kind of the next stage for that. Um, but let's look at the elements. Um, I chose as unit of execution uh, an STD function and to store that in an STD deck to have the producer push into the container and the consumer basically um, gets to pop front and just take the, you know, it's basically a leaf element. Um, you could do something similar with STD list or key. And I'm not sure like what is a perfect uh, container for this at the moment. And that's something to play around with. Um, what I like about deck is that it's guaranteed to be like uh, close to vector and probably behave almost or identical to a vector, except that you can take the pop front. Vector doesn't have pop front, but uh, as long as only a few job items are in the key for the deck, then this should work out. And maybe the key would be the better name for it. Um, then you need a condition variable, which basically is signaling to a waiting thread that there is work available. And the thread pool itself then either can, you know, say, hey, we just have one job, so we notify one, you use notify one, and one thread gets woken up and gets to do the job. And um, if like there is a method to add more than one job, um, then we could say notify all. Um, and of course you need a mutex because uh, accessing all those things in multi-thread contexts, you always have to protect this with a lock and then you have some contention on that uh, and you should should keep that short etc right so um then there's actually in c plus plus 20 a nice feature which is stop source and stop token um you create in your thread pool a stop source and then with get token you can give that you know, you get the stop token and in the thread itself, you can then uh, do a loop, which you know always queries like if the thread should be was requested to stop from outside. So you have a synchronization mechanism, which is only for stopping, uh, which is nice. Um, I would love to have like a similar mechanism for exchanging values or something, but that's right now what we have, and that's very nice. Um, and I chose to have like an atomic counter to kind of have an idea what the number of busy threads is for just general things. And I think the, the thread pool itself can make use of that number in all kinds of ways. Um, and I was curious about, uh, you know, I need to know how many threads I want to use and then uh, hardware concurrency is always nice to use. Also that way you learn that you can have, this is the number of that on uh, Compiler Explorer at the moment is two. And uh, threads work at Compiler Explorer, but not always that great. Um, here we have the completed class, class thread pool. Um, one thing is missing, and that is it has a subclass, which is the class thread context, which has also um, a reference to the work deck uh, stop token which it gets from the thread pool and then various references to the condition variables, mutexes, et cetera, what it's working with. And then it has a unique pointer of a thread because uh, it has like basically then a Lambda, which takes all this into the Lambda and that runs in the thread. Um, and in the class thread pool, um, 
you have a vector with thread context objects. And this actually caused issues because um, when you push a new thread into that, then the vector grows and copies things around. And that seemed to have issues with the Lambda running in the thread then. Um, it was very interesting to see and something which caught me a bit off guard, but uh, it's not always as easy as you think. Um, but it's an easy fix with threads reserve, then um, these objects stay in place. Um, if you take an SDB list here, that would also have a similar effect that um, basically the object doesn't get moved when the vector or the container grows. Um, and the next step basically is to start a project with CMake, Enet, and Conan to bring the code into a real project and to be able, like Godbolt is great, but debugging on Godbolt is not so great. And I want to just also like, you know, to start writing tests for this, et cetera, et cetera. So this is now ready to be like moved out of a prototype website to a prototype project. Um, and that's basically it for tonight.